does die young. Robert does it well. Ha ha. Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Morning Game and Watch Shop, episode 8.3. It's I, Rob. This is Dom. Let me go check the camera. I feel like it's really low. Dom, do something. Um, well, I'll tell you about what I've been doing this week a little bit. I've been checking out some different movies. I've been watching some trailers recently. Um, man, it was really late. It was like 4 in the morning when I was watching these trailers, and I know I watched some really good ones. So it was 4 in the morning when you were watching these trailers? Yeah. So, so um... I'm running You're off five your... hours of sleep right now, okay. but so I feel great. We're, we're obviously in the gaming section, but let's talk about some I've trailers. also been eating like you vegetables were... for three days straight, too. Okay. So, <laughs> Dom, grandma and grandpa's house, mm -hmm. four o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. in your bed, yeah. snuggle up under, underneath some, some warm blankets. No, 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 no. It, they, my grandparents, my house is hot. Like, they don't, it's not a, like a regular air-conditioned home, right? Like, it's air-conditioned, but just, like, just above what the temperature is outside. Or just below, sorry. So it's 80, 81 outside, right? Yeah. Our house is, like, 79 degrees. Uh, I hate that, dude. Yeah. Okay, so you're probably just free-balling it right now, then. Yeah, like, straight up, just blanket off me. I got my pillow that specifically is, like, made for, like, cooling. Like, it keeps the size, each side, like, really cool for, like, a good, like, 30 minutes. It's, like, one of those memory foam ones. Nice. I love it. So, you're uh, laying down watching some trailers. Yeah. What are you watching? Uh, I checked out the new, I don't know if it's new. It probably came out, like... A little bit ago, but it was a more extended trailer for the new Blade Runner movie. Oh. It, <laughs> Dude, that thing's so gonna be amazing. so good. So amazing. It's got Jared Leto in there. Yeah. I was like, And they use the original soundtrack from the original mm -hmm. movie. Now, I'm going to admit something. I've never seen Blade Runner before in my life. Oh, bro. And I've heard bro. that there's so many Go different versions. Today. There's so many different versions. What do you mean? There's like the Blade Runner. There's the theatrical version. There's the director's cut. There's the final cut. And I'm like, which one do you watch? I've heard a lot of people say that the final cut is the one to see. Yeah. So Super long and stuff, but just watch it. You so, need to watch it. It's one of those things that's definitely like with our show and we're talking about movies and pop culture. Like That's a big one. Yeah, dude. So I, I really do need to check that one. Uh, Absolutely. I need to watch it first. Because this one obviously has Harrison Ford, Jared Leto. Mm -hmm. You got um, Ryan Gosling mm -hmm. as the main protagonist. You have... What the heck? You got... Um, Dave Bautista I know is in it, and you have a couple, couple other actresses in there. I don't really know. Yep. But the movie just looks so beautiful. And the ambiance of it with, like, the original soundtrack. Because the soundtrack like a sounds like a... Like a yeah. futuristic robot. It like sounds like fuel. an SNES soundtrack, you know? Like, mm -hmm. the just real, like... Like, it's Well, in so the trailer, good. too, like, they kind of show over this big building, you know? Like, them dropping <laughs> down, and there's a big... <laughs> Atari symbol like this, like on my shirt right here, just like is it really? glowing up on the wall. Yeah, I don't remember like that. Huge. It's pretty amazing. I thought it was great. Um, there's also a new Charlie Charlie's Theron movie coming out Atomic called Blonde? Yeah, I saw that and I was like, I didn't know how to like really take that. I was like, okay, it seemed interesting. It seemed like I didn't know if that was like tied into some sort of like. Previous stuff. movie or anything like oh, that. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I didn't know if she was like her own, like, you know, like Jessica Jones esque kind of character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, from a graphic novel or anything like that. Um, yeah, so right now as we speak, I'm downloading Heroes of the Storm. Uh, Dom has been playing it. Uh, David, who's been a guest on the show, is addicted to it. I know other people who've been playing with it. I play a little bit of League of Legends. I love Paragon, which is on PS4. And so I thought, you know, let me jump into this to see how it is. Because Overwatch, I've been really interested in Overwatch. So Blizzard's been kind of been on my radar, so I'm downloading it right now. Mm -hmm. On top of that, uh, I just finished Little Nightmares last night. Oh, did you really? Um, I'm going to be giving out a review really soon. Is it good or bad? On it. Uh, so spoilers. A little, a little bit of spoilers as to what I'm going to say about Little Nightmares. Um, so if you guys don't want to watch it, I'm going to put up a... And then once it gets to another part... If you skim ahead, there'll probably be like a red part, and you might see like uh, a rubber ducky face on Dom, and then a big spoiler thing across the screen. Like, spoiler end, that's when the spoilers end. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so it's a good three hour experience. Um, it's only that long. Yeah, I paid 35 bucks for the special edition, mm -hmm. um, and I think it was well worth it. Oh, okay. Um, the 
the thing is that you're like this little kid and you are inside the ship and you're trying to run away from these baddies, you know? Mm-hmm. So you got the long, the long arm creature. So you're in a ship. Yes. That's where you're stuck. And it's, the goal is kind of like to get out. Yeah. And so there comes a point to where once you're at the last level, there's a moment where your character is like, like I get to the side of this entire ship, dude, and I just start climbing mm-hmm. this entire ship. If in the background, you just see these people just going, like, walking into the ship. And they're, like, literally, like, gratuitous, overly just, like, humongous people that wear masks you know, over their face. And they're, like, disgusting-looking people, dude. Like, literally, their, their, their body form could literally be, like, a ball. And Really? Yeah. And so they're walking in the background, and I'm just still climbing this thing. Once you get to the top, you find out that this place is kind of like a... Um, what you call it? A like a, uh, a a cruise for rich people to go on and to go eat. Mm-hmm. And so once you start getting there, things start falling into place. So in the very beginning, you wake up and you get to like this children's place. Mm-hmm. And what they're doing is that they steal these kids, they give them toys and everything to raise them. Once they get old enough, they get them and they t- put them in these cages until the cooks, which the cooks I don't know if you remember watching the PewDiePie one, mm-hmm. where there's that dude who was chopping up stuff. They grab the kids and they kill them. They chop them up and they feed them to these people who are rich and they eat this food. Hmm. And so they eat kids. And so wow. you get to the point where you're like, you're like, the first part is like, you didn't think that you were going to interact with these people. Mm-hmm. But the first moment that you do, like my heart jumped. I was like, you're trying to run across this entire place because this guy, like they don't walk. They just crawl on the floor after you. And so like, you're just running for it. And then the last level, yeah. Is you meet this geisha. I believe that's how you say it. Geisha. Geisha. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you meet this geisha, and she, very slender woman yeah. with like a mask on, and you find out all these mirrors are broken, mm-hmm. and you're getting this idea that she doesn't like the way she looks, so she puts on this mask. There's no words. You just have to do, it's like environmental storytelling. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like she doesn't like her image, so she puts a mask on to hide, because she doesn't think she can be beautiful enough. And you, as you go, you're finding pictures of you yourself, which the character that you're playing as, his name is Six. So you find out that she is like the daughter of this geisha. That's how you say it, right? Mm-hmm. Geisha. And then you just find these paintings like behind, like, like there's a bed and you just see it peeking from behind. Like she just was hiding it. And what happens is that the geisha thought that her child was more beautiful than her and threw her down with all the other kids to kill her. Oh. So what happens oh. is that, what happens is that, Throughout each level, there's a moment where you're, where six mm-hmm. gets really hungry, and it's the weirdest moment. It's the weird moments in the in the in the game because it gets hungry and it just keeps walking, and then when it comes up to something and just starts eating it. And so there's like a moment where there's a finger, on the, yeah, and there's a moment where there's a finger on the floor, and six was like very hungry, just went up to and just started eating the finger, and then there's a moment where there was a rat, and it's when it just and it, it's one time every level, midway through a level, yeah, and she just starts eating the rat. And then there's another one where there's these little these little guys that just start running away. And those are little kids that got had the chance to escape. Mm-hmm. And they just like you just see them like run away in just random areas of the game. And there's a moment where that thing was holding something was holding a hot dog in its hand to hand over to you to eat it because you're hungry. And so your character goes and just like moves the hot dog and just starts eating that child. And so it's like, what's going on? So you're so this Six is one of these rich people's offspring, then. Which is the geisha's offspring. The geisha is one of the rich people. Well, she is. She looks different because she's tall, slender. Yeah. And I think she owns this ship. Yeah. And she just feeds off of the money that these people get from eating all of this stuff. Wow. You know? Okay. And so, at the very end of the level, you finally get this mirror that was not broken that the geisha left untouched. And you get the mirror, and you go, and you have to go shine in the light of the geisha, and she just dies. And so she's on the floor, like trying to move and six just crawls up to her and just gets her by the neck and just like chomps into her neck. And so you absorb the geisha's power because the geisha can like draw life from people. And so the reason why the geisha is there on the ship is that these people who come and eat, the geisha goes and takes their life so she can be immortal. And so six. <laughs> That's such a crazy story, yeah. dude. What it, the but this is all through environmental oh story. This is all through envir- environmental storytelling. So you have to like, which just, I love, by the way. I oh, love, love that storytelling. And so the very end mm-hmm. is you walk through these doors, and six is just right there, and like it's this hall, 
of like um, like just tables on each side and these people are eating and just like you were just like looking just legit like she's just walking through real slow and someone will come and she's just like just taking people like just taking all their lives and then like this small little character mm-hmm. and then you just start going up the steps and then a couple of those little creatures that are kids that were able to escape just like look up the steps and it ends and mm-hmm. like it's as if she finally escaped the the ship yeah and so at the very end after the credits it shows the character like at the edge of the open door and when the ship is out in sea it submerges underwater and the only part that you can see looks like a lighthouse sticking out from under the water yeah and so you see six are straight there standing on top of this says thanks for playing but in the background you hear like a ship coming and it's like are they gonna make a part two where six goes and gets on that ship and gets to the mainland to like wipe out everybody because huh. she has gained the power of the Gaish and she can live immortal and so the people who made this game are coming out with the comic book series that's a prequel to lead up as to what's going on in this story so I am stoked hmm. I am so in love with this game that dude. sounds great it's, and you can get it on Steam so there's a way that you can get it dude. do you know if, it, you know if uh, it's playable <coughs> on Mac though on Steam? oh dude it doesn't, I don't think it takes that much it really doesn't take that much. You might, you could be able to try. I just, I'm like wondering if it's like uh, spoilers done. Formats on Mac. Um, but yeah, so I'll be putting up like an official review soon, yeah. talking about the gameplay and everything like that. But yeah, dude, love that game. Absolutely adore that game. Um, were you picking something up? Sorry. Were you checking something out? Oh yeah, just I'm checking out the little nightmares. See gotcha. if it's on. Uh... Um. I think you can get Steam on Mac, though, right? And just play it off your Mac? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But, like, you can get Steam on Mac, but not all games that are on Steam are compatible with the Mac. Gotcha. Yeah. It's a side-scroller, so I don't think it's... And it is beautiful, but I'm pretty sure there might be some dials that you can put down the graphics. There's so many games, though, that, like, should be compatible with Mac, but they're not. They're just, like, strictly, like, Microsoft or even Linux. I don't even know who uses, like, Linux. Yeah, I don't even know who uses that either. Useless turd of a... Anyways... Well, guys, thanks for joining us. Morning Game and Watch Shop. Uh, We're going to be giving our top three video games of all time. Uh, I'm going to start off. Dom will end the entire episode out with his top three. Um, So I'm going to say the top three games that have honestly changed my life. Mm -hmm. Um, Because they've really had so much of a put... God, for a second, I thought that was Chris. (laughs) I heard his voice. Um... It's really changed my life because there's been just certain games where it's like I, it has proven to me that games are more than just a video game. You know, mm-hmm. games are more so than just like this pastime that people just do when they're lazy. It's like it's an oh, art yeah. form. Yeah. There's a story here, and so I'm gonna start off with Metal Gear Solid, mm-hmm. um, and I'm gonna have to say Metal Gear Solid is my number one video game of all time, and it's the, the second one is a close contender, but <coughs> all in all. I have to say this one is that started it all for me. Um, I remember I was six years old. Uh, my father got a PlayStation One, and my uncle took him to Circuit City. Now I don't know if you've ever seen a Circuit City, but this is a no longer running Best Buy kind of place. Mm-hmm. So we went. We got Metal Gear Solid One. I still have the original case. I still have the original CDs at home. Um, and I remember my dad popping that in that night. <coughs> Excuse me. And. Uh, we started playing, and the way it opens up is like, I just remember, like, you remember the PlayStation 1 sounds, like, when you when you pop in the CD and you just hear the, and just like the noise from the PlayStation 1 intro. Yeah. And then, it once it hits, you just hear the beginning noise. Like, it was so simple. Mm-hmm. And before you hit the menu, the menu button, there's a little cutscene that starts. And it's the, um, it's a, uh, the colonel that's talking um, about what's going on and what needs to be done and that there's these people going on. And so from the very beginning, I was like, am I watching a movie right now? Mm-hmm. Or is this a game that I'm playing, that my dad's playing and I'm watching him play? Yeah. And that game was the first game that I ever played that I was like, this is amazing. And it was the first game I ever played in my entire life. Mm-hmm. I was like, and from then on, that set the standard for me. I was like, this is how every single game needs to be like this. Like, it needs to be, if there's a game that's about story, it has to be as cinematic as Hideo Kojima made this game. Yeah. And it has to be as great as the voice acting that was in that game. 
And I just, dude, that, that game means so much to me. And I, Solid Snake has like, been my biggest, like my favorite characters of all time. Um, and just there's moments in that game that just blew my mind. Um, moments where like the, there's a point where you go into the third floor on the when you get into the, like the the armor facilities you go into other you go to the third floor and you have to go get the um what's his name it's not darpa chief it's um god this is gonna bug me anyways you have to go get, save this guy uh, and the only way is like you don't you have to figure it out because you have to knock on the walls mm -hmm. and you find out there's a hollow point when you find that hollow point you put a c4 you blast it there's a whole, there's a room behind the wall and you're like what like what is this, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And so you keep going. It's like the stealth in it was like you use the the cardboard box to hide from guys, and <laughs> the and then you box. use the you use the shaft grenade I to stop it. the surveillance cameras. And I love the the moment where you go face Psycho Mantis, and he's like, I can I can control your controller, put your controller on the floor, and like he's going like that, and like the vibration is it's, it's like it's playing with the controller stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when you're fighting Psycho Mantis, there's a moment where he's like, I can read every move that you're doing. And so when you're moving, it's like. He like he knows what you're gonna do, and you're like, what? How do you fight this guy? Mm -hmm. And the only way to do it is you have to get out from the controller from port one and put it into port two, and he can no longer read your memories. Yeah. And you're playing it a different way. Yeah. Amazing. Like Hideo Kojima was doing stuff that was not done before. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. So love the story in the first one. It was a nice, just it was a tight, straightforward story, um, and it was just really, really good. And I have to say, Metal Gear Solid One changed my life in the regards to storytelling. And I've always, now I'm at a point in my life where I want to like, I want to write a video game story. Like I want to get into that field of doing stuff like that one day because of Hideo Kojima, because of Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. Because he set that standard. And so if it wasn't for Metal Gear, a lot of games wouldn't have been the way they are now. Like Hitman wouldn't happen, I don't think, without Metal Gear. Um, other big story games, I don't think would have happened without mm -hmm. Hideo Kojima pushing that that way, you know? Yeah. Back in... 1996 when it happened or seven so it's a long time yeah, ago it's a long time ago um my number two would have to be the last of us mm -hmm. uh i if anyone knows me hmm. i drill this story down to the ground dude um and this one's a hard one because it is i like honestly this is metal gear and this is like last of us right there i don't know if you can see that well it's like right there dude um <laughs> and so i remember <coughs> When The Last of Us came out, it was made by Naughty Dog, the guys who did Uncharted. I loved Uncharted. And when I found out that they were doing a, a zombie-like game, I was like, okay, this is interesting. And I remember the first trailer that came out in E3 where you are Joel and Ellie. You get into like this um, this room, like this big uh, building, and there's like you going through the rooms and you're weaving through different rooms. And the moment where one of the guys spots you and you're just like – just the grittiness of it all and the way that everything worked – and the moment at the end of that trailer where like you're joining, you're just like taking this guy down and then you finally get like your shotgun out and I think it's Ellie who gives it to him and then you pick it up and you're going to shoot the guy and the guy's like, no, 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 don't shoot me. And then poof, just ends. The, the screen goes black. Bruce Straley, one of the guys of Nine Dogs right there playing it and like the entire arena just like goes crazy, dude. And I was like, this is going to be something right here. And so I remember whenever it came out, uh, I rented it off of Redbox. Didn't have a lot of money. Played it and finished it in one day because I didn't want to rent it again. And so I didn't <laughs> sleep, dude. I rented it and I just kept playing it the next day. It until was a I good finished game. It. I, I honestly, so I good. It's a pretty good game. So good. I love it. Um, the voice acting with Troy Baker and and Ashley Johnson, linear voice to Ellie, and just like the realness that the game brought to the game and just the grittiness and like the story was so much deeper that we haven't seen anything like that. In a very long time. Yeah. Like, Metal Gear evolved and came out with 2, 3, Peace Walker, and 4, but the story became very convoluted. And oh, yeah. Last of Us yeah. was just, like, this very singular story, and you know what you're going to do. And this was, like, the, the the game that took the next step. Mm -hmm. Like, Metal Gear started it off to where, like, games could be cinematic. And then Last of Us took oh, yeah. it to where, like, this is where it needs to be, you know? Snake Eater, I thought, was really cinematic. I loved oh, Snake Eater. Oh, Snake Eater was, yeah, that was, that was amazing. One, that was the first one I ever played. Really? And I, got, I picked it up at a pawn shop when I was, like, uh, like in middle yes. school. Yeah, like, I did. My grandpa worked at a pawn shop. I picked it up, and it was, like, <laughs> so it was, like, 10 bucks when I got it. Yeah. And I sat there, and I, like, was, like, what? why have I never played one of these games before? It's really like, good. Yeah, I mean, the controls, like, if you're not familiar with, like, 
like those kind of games, the controls are a little different. They than are most, really different. Most games, but I enjoyed it. I really got like super into it. I remember just sitting at my grandpa's table in like middle school and high school after after class and even before school. Yeah. On this tiny little television that couldn't have been bigger than <laughs> couldn't have been bigger than like thirteen inches, about. right? Like, and I had my PS two hooked up to it. It was. I mean, the TV literally was like probably that big, you yeah, know, dude. just tiny as. And I'm sitting there, just you know, <coughs> hours and hours, you know. Yeah, dude. Um, so yeah, that game was just great, and um, those games are great. The ones that you can just like sit there and get sucked into. Yeah. I think that's what kind of affected my choices. We'll get more into that. Yeah. What well, yours is very yours yeah. are very interesting. Um, but yeah, final words on on, on Last of Us I, when. <clears throat> they released last year, 2016, that Last of Us 2 was going to happen. Yeah. And I remember it was like, it, it just, the it black screen, you just hear, gung, 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 gung. and like it opens up and you see like the streets and like everything's rotting right out the bat. I you was got, like, this is Last of Us. With the, the firefly symbol in yes. the background that's all yes. just kind of faded. Yes. Their forested area. And then Ellie's right there on the bed playing her guitar. Mm -hmm. Like I literally wanted to cry. Yeah. It doesn't and surprise your, your anybody. Theory, your theory that like, Joel is like not really there. He's kind the of the theory like, is that Joel's like, probably dead. Yeah, um, she's just seeing him. Which that's an interesting theory. I think that later on, maybe like maybe that happens, but I feel like he's he's gonna be in there for like seventy five percent of the game. No, yeah, I don't. Yeah. You know, I think that it would just really take away from the game if he wasn't in there. Because Joel was one of the big moments of the game. Like he pushed that. You know. Yeah, yeah. But I would like to see in Last of Us Two if we play Ellie a little bit more than Joel. Mm. Um. Though like more I of do, her story. well, yeah, but just play her more as the character and let Joel be the one who's kind of tagging along. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. I mean, that, that, I'm just so excited for that game, and we'll just Ooh. see how that goes. I I know Naughty Dog's gonna knock it out of the park. Um, They've been pretty good with their games lately. They have amazing. Um, last game I would have to say is Pokemon Silver or Crystal. Uh, you can even see, say, Soul Silver and Heart Gold, even though they're part of the same generation. Yeah. I do prefer Soul Silver, Soul Silver, but Soul Silver. Uh, <laughs> say because that five it, times fast, yeah, right? right yeah. Uh, because it was more refined and more beautiful and everything. Um, Pokemon was the first Nintendo game I ever played. Um, it was the only game I had on my Game Boy Color. Um, yeah, same here. And I remember getting it. My very first Pokemon, which is my be most beloved Pokemon of all time, is Cyndaquil. Um... That game, as a little kid, gave me the sense of wonder and exploration and adventure that I needed at the time. Yeah. Uh, Metal Gear was, is a real dark, gritty, kind of like an adult game, so I didn't really get that from there. But Crystal gave me that, you know? Crystal, uh, Crystal's a good one. I liked it. I feel like most of the, like, when you, when you become an adult, if you really break down, like, the Pokemon games, they, they are a little dark. No, oh, yeah, they're a little dark, yeah. in their own aspect. You don't see it as a kid. You know, I mean, you just see like, oh yeah, I get like Pokemon. I get to like travel around, but it's like, you gotta take for example that like, your character is also like eleven years old, wandering around the world. Yeah, with a freaking just up like a crazy little monster that he just picked up from some weird professor. Like, <laughs> okay, yeah, <sighs> but yeah, that game. And you're fighting like adults. You're like going. No, yeah, yeah for sure. You're like, straight up, like going into people's offices and. Like, and you can honestly, your your character's probably uh, awake like twenty four seven. Because right, like like never what do they feed him? You know, what, yeah. is he, what is he? He doesn't ever eat. Your character's never eating or no. drinking anything. No. Um. So yeah, the that game uh means so much to me. I remember um just figuring it out, doing the gym leaders, and once I got mm -hmm. to the uh, what's it called? Uh, the league, um, Pokemon League. Yeah. Um. I was about to say Justice League. The final, oh, final four. Yeah. Um, I that game it. Oh yeah, final four. There we go. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, so I remember once you get to that moment, I had my team. Um, obviously I had Typhlosion and I had Red Gyarados. Worked him up to get very powerful. Got to the last. And Red character. Gyarados is a shiny, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That was the first shiny I think ever made. I didn't. You know what? <laughs> I, I pride myself on being a huge fan of those games as well, and I didn't even know what a shiny was, probably until like 2013. Really? Not at all. Interesting. Did not know that. 
Um, before people destroy me in the comments, I think there was shinies in the previous games, but I don't think it was much of a color difference. It was more so stat difference in regards mm. to the first ones. I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, but yeah, so I remember I faced the last dude. He had his Charizard. I had my Red Gyarados, Dragon versus Dragon. Mm -hmm. um, and it was not looking good for me. I had enough life, literally, that a Caterpie can tackle me, I would have been dead. And it was like at that moment where I was at the edge, dude, and I wanted to beat this guy so much. And at that moment, dude, eight-year-old Robert Rodriguez, okay, in his room, playing this game, I had a piece so bad. But you know what was more important you to me? You told me this story. You know what was more you important to me? This. I love this. What was more important to me was beating <laughs> that dude. And so I peed myself in that moment so I can beat this game. You heard it first. Oh. I very well could have just left it there and could have been going still. And I could have come back to it. Oh my gosh. The picture for some of the reason, show needs to be you going. Like, play, no, dude. Play the Game Boy in a diaper. <laughs> like, oh yeah, for sure, dude. Uh, oh, sure. Yeah, I, 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 I peed uh, myself just so I can get this done. Um... And that's dedication, folks. Gyarados was very like little life. Charizard was like max life. Okay, mm -hmm. I was at the edge. I was like, I had nothing left, and this is gonna nothing be the first time. This is gonna be the first time I ever beat them. You know, so at the edge, I used Hydro Pump, and just like took off so much of, Char of Charizard's life because like, he was obviously fire. Um, his life dropped dramatically, and then he was gonna do um, something something wing, uh, which I knew because since. Uh, Gyarados had water with him it was going to kill me automatically yeah. and so uh, he did it and I remember it missed I was like holy crap and I just pushed Hydro, hydro Pump beat him <coughs> and I, I would never have been so happy did in my get, entire did life did you get hyped like you do when we go to the Cider Arcade oh and dude you beat like Chris at the game <laughs> yeah dude I was yes. I was like <laughs> but dude I was it was so, so good. And at the very end, you know, it kind of like the little credits and it shows like your character and it shows the Pokemon that you won with. Like, yeah. Um, dude, that game was so good. So, yeah. so good. And it, that game just brought so much memories and made me feel alive as a child. So <clears throat> that is my top three. Um, Metal Gear Solid, The Last of Us, and Pokemon Crystal slash Soul Silver. Mm -hmm. My favorite video games of all time. Um... But yeah, guys, thanks for joining us here on Morning Gaming Watch Shop 8.3. Sorry, Rob, this is Dom. Stay tuned for the next one. Dom's going to be giving his top three video games of all time. Until next time, keep playing those video games, boys.